Very good evening to everybody and thanks for clicking on to the Friday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. The winter forecast is coming up this weekend, 4 p.m. on Sunday, the 20, no, sorry, the 30th of November. So there is a link in the description below for that. Really working hard over the past several days here to try and fully understand what's going on within the atmosphere and uh, you know even the experts even the very best out there are not overly confident with regards to the evolution of december I'm noticing quite a few folks on the comments you know shouting off about the uh, you know forecast being wrong the ideas being wrong listen at the end of the day we don't truly know yet exactly how this is all going to pan out What's going on up in the stratosphere is uh, one thing. What is going on with the Manjulian oscillation in the Pacific, the tropical Pacific, is another thing. Looks as if the two are kind of working against one another at the minute. They, we may begin to see uh, that MJO becoming more favorable for blocking as we head towards the middle portions of the month. Nothing is off the table, folks, at this minute in time. We could see significant cold building as we head towards the back half of the the month of december we do have an, an a renewed deceleration in mean zonal winds showing up quite confidently in a lot of mod modeling now we are seeing a trend towards a, a negative both in the arctic oscillation north atlantic oscillation a very complex situation that is going on with it between the tropics and the pool at this minute in time so uh, you know listen let's not jump the gun here we could have a mild winter we also could have a, a you know a decent cold period in the winter time what i'm leaning towards will be revealed this upcoming sunday so stay tuned hang fire listen we could you know from a winter weather lover's point of view like you know i'm one of them myself but I'm, i have to be as honest as i can i have to be able to provide the evidence to back up everything that I'm saying, whether it be warm, wet, windy, or cold and snowy and blocked uh, and uh, and whatnot. Have to have to provide the evidence to, to back up what I'm saying here. Um, so we'll wait and see what happens. But certainly, in the near term, we do have mobility. We have westerly winds, and uh, but we also have a lot going on up above within the stratosphere at the minute before i get to that and I, i'm going to try and cut this uh, relatively short tonight um there is a lot of content coming up there will be a global weather report a brief one tomorrow then obviously um it'll be all eyes on sunday 4 p.m for the release of the 25 26 winter forecast if you haven't already done so consider subscribing to the channel uh, certainly i'll be looking at the uh, all the aspects technical stuff try and show you a little bit more kind of day-to-day -day weather uh, i know there's a lot of people on the the channel that have a variety of, of different understandings of the atmosphere i'm listen i'm learning just the same i'm an amateur forecaster i am not an expert and uh, we will wait and see uh, how this all pans out it's interesting nevertheless because what we could have is a strong polar vortex the mjo rotating through the Indian Ocean into the maritime continent. That, you know, basically forces a, a, a strong polar vortex, positive AO, positive NAO, mild conditions. This is a fascinating end game to autumn, beginning to winter. But we had quite stormy conditions through the overnight and through the first half of this morning. Wind gusts in excess of uh, 80 mile per hour, even in exposed lowland areas, but the over higher terrain, we were talking about winds in excess of 100 miles an hour. But the, this is in kilometers per hour. And you can see, if we put on the uh, pressure chart here of the medial seal here, so this is the actual pressure as it evolved. The system is now pulling away to the north. But you can see here that the in its close, closest approach, it was down into the 950s millibars, as you can see here, right at the very top left hand corner of the graphic i know it's a little bit hard to see but it did drop into the 950s and millibars we obviously had quite a gradient between 959 and a what a thousand and fourteen millibars so obviously that the tight gradient 
uh, meant that we really bunched those isobars together, created some very lively wind gusts. But uh, not just wind gusts, uh, we were seeing some uh, thunderstorm clusters developing uh, aboard that flow uh, within that circulation. And uh, this was uh, put up this morning. In fact, it was late last night from Highland Weather. Um, always recommend uh, following Lee's page on Facebook as well as Twitter as well. But uh, he goes on to say that uh, this very intense squall, so embedded thunderstorm clusters, possibly some rotation. We did have some uh, variable wind, both speed and direction, with height through the atmosphere. That creates that turning within the atmosphere. We did see uh, a downdraft that produced a wind gust of 112. So these are unofficial reports, but nevertheless, um, you know, you know, believable given the circumstances meteorologically, and uh, on the Isle of Skye, we're seeing a wind gust in excess of ninety miles per hour at uh, at Elgo. Some very intense squally showers tonight, and some tomorrow. Hail and thunder uh, mixed in, especially across the west. So, uh, yeah, we did see power cuts as well associated with these very strong winds. You can see here this uh, showing uh, lightning strikes have taken out power around Loch. Logalsh, Kincraig, and south of Aviemore. And uh, again, let me just see here. This was from this morning. A uh, number of areas uh, with power outages this morning due to uh, not only wind, but the uh, possible lightning strikes as well. Uh, the, the ones that are around the uh, Mull and Logalsh are likely the result of lightning strikes, says Lee. This was uh, early on this morning. You can see here, if we look at uh, the winds um, in kilometres per hour, you can still see that it's uh, pretty gusty out there, but winds are beginning to relax. We've got higher pressure coupling its way in. That's going to, we're also introducing something a little bit colder as well. So under clear camera conditions, we are obviously going to see the temperatures coming down. A couple of mild nights in the past few days. Uh, you can see here that the those were the winds as that centre then passed the northwest through the past twelve hours or so. Here you can see the winds really ramping up in the the outer Hebrides sky and uh, the inner Hebride region here as well. Uh, don't know exactly how strong the peak gusts were, but uh, certainly we we're talking about the wind over sky uh, in excess of ninety rum. In excess of 100 miles per hour mainland uk 70 plus we're talking about the 70 mile an hour winds in stornoway for example but further south down in the north and south years we're talking about winds in excess of 80 miles per hour and uh, very windy conditions even down in glasgow last night very very difficult to deal with curtain sided trailers in those high winds and uh, some really gusty lively conditions as i drove back north driving south and driving north was a rather interesting during the course of last night. So anyway, let's uh, get into uh, some interesting things with regards to the medium to long range stuff. Now, blocking is becoming more likely. After a zonal phase increase uh, and, and an increase in the NAO, uh, a blockage weather regime around the middle of December looks likely. The MJO very strong in the Atlantic but propagates rapidly eastwards. Remember this warming is a reflective type. Remember the you know don't get confused between the stratospheric polar vortex and the tropospheric polar vortex. Obviously this is uh, driven largely by what is going on within the atmosphere through the troposphere. A lot more frictional effects, wave breaks, Rosby waves that they create a ripple through the troposphere that then creates a, 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 a frictional effect that, that then warms the stratosphere it also increases uh, the deceleration of winds around the polar vortex remember this is that one big large circulation that builds in strength it normally isn't as disrupted as it is at this time this is still a devent developmental stage with the polar vortex, it usually peaks in strength around about the, the solstice, so 21st of December. But there's been a, a lot of um, influence from beneath that has been creating these uh, stretching events with the polar vortex. And the different types of polar vortex uh, weakening, 
SSW, et cetera, et cetera, it is very, very important to consider um, because what happens is we've got this different variety. We've got 70% 70, 70 chance that we get a sudden stress very warm an event, which is a major. That's when the winds reverse at the 10 millibars within the stratosphere instead of going from west to east or blowing from east to west. And uh, it looks as if the time frame of a potential minus wind speed at 10 millibars is less than 24 hours. So therefore, it wouldn't necessarily constitute a major SSW from a technical point of view. But the, there is this possibility that with the influence of that strong convection over the West Pacific, phase seven of the MGO, we then have this renewed shot of uh, strong warming showing up towards the mid months, perhaps towards the kind of run up to Christmas. Like I said, folks, this is a very complex situation here that you cannot just make any simple assumption. This, by the way, is the winds at 10 millibars over the pole. And look at the how we've got two splits in the vortex we've got one piece over northwest north america we've got another piece over northern russia and we've got these strong winds that are blowing uh, out of you know basically out of the atlantic across europe across asia and hooking up over the top of the pole and then down over north america so uh, we've certainly got a lot of things going on at the minute um but i want to show you um just trying to kind of get my burns here because there was a lot of different tabs opened up here this is the current warming that is showing up according to the gfs extended model here and you've got this first burst of strong warming that has uh, crossed the pool now we don't have that reflection of cold air over north america but you do have that over central asia as you can see here now we've got this secondary burst of warming that is showing up here that is what may push the winds to zero so basically no winds are in the polar vortex then you notice here that the pv begins to reposition over the pole again so that is what what shows the mean zone of winds strengthening but watch as we play through towards the you know the between the the 20 the 17th and the 23rd of the month We've got this next surge of warming. So yet another push of warming showing up. That could be induced by the MGO beginning to grab a hold of the, the lower atmosphere. In other words, the lower atmosphere being the troposphere. At the minute, it's becoming suppressed by what's going on within the stratosphere. But once the, we start to see changes taking place up over the top of the pole, the effect of that MGO phase 7 is likely to begin to kick in therefore we're going to start to see a slowdown in angular momentum basically momentum uh, through the the hemispheric circulation uh, and allowing blocking to begin to develop within the 500 millibar level and you can see here in the upcoming seven day period You've got this deep trough, so we do have the influence of that warming within the stratosphere effect in North America. We've got surges of, of cold Arctic air that are going to pulsate southwards down over North America. In turn, that increases the gradient over eastern North America, strengthens the jet, and forces areas of low pressure towards Western Europe here. Because what is happening is we're not seeing the effects of that MGO phase 7 over the next week to 10 days or so but once we start to see the changes to um, proceed across the uh, stratospheric <laughs> polar vortex we are going to then start to see the mgo phase 7 kick in and i think we're going to start to see blocking developing here but the modeling is all over the place with this at the minute now let's play through we've got region at the moment north pacific extending up into the northwest of north america hence why we've got these shots of bitterly cold air but notice we're starting to lose the ridge over the Gulf of Alaska and Alaska itself, northwest North America. We're beginning to start to see ridging building northwards up into the high latitudes here. That, to me, is the influence of the MGO beginning to settle in as we start to lose the momentum. And by losing the momentum, 
you're weakening the jet, you're going to force it further southwards. And uh, you've got the, the trend now starting to show up in the ECMWF ensemble. This is the North Atlantic Oscillation going from firmly positive two sigma above the neutral down below. Uh, so we are going to, uh, according to this anyway, head into negative territory. And then the North Atlantic, uh, no, sorry, the Arctic Oscillation, you can see it is also trending negative as well. In terms of the near term, this is the upcoming five days. So we've got a cold in average north. We've got a warmer than average south of the UK. We've got a cold in average Ireland overall. Uh, much of Europe uh, warmer than average with the exceptions of Poland and Iberia as well as France uh, or Italy, should I say. Day 6 through 10, we are uh, largely warmer than average across much of Europe. And the, day 11 through 15, we're largely warmer than average as well. Now, there is other elements uh, that I was wanting to show you, but I just simply don't have time. Check out Judah Cohen's blog on the internet. So it's Dr. Judah Cohen, and this is his latest article, Oscillation Polar Vortex blog. Check that out. And then another interesting article that I want to highlight is the differences in type of sudden stratospheric warming. This was from uh, James Peacock uh, on the Met Swift website here. I want to read this myself actually tonight but check this out because this is quite interesting um from from james peacock i'll try and leave links in the description below but that's it i'm afraid I, i've kind of run out of time interesting happenings with regards to the storminess um, over the last 24 hours we do have an area of low pressure that is going to pass across the southern uk over the next couple of days so uh, you know be aware of that wind and rain will be a factor colder further north with higher pressure clear skies uh, and lighter winds mean we're going to see chilly days and frosty nights and uh, i think we're going to continue to see the atlantic rule roost over the next week or so but yeah there is so many things to really keep a hold of here so uh, keep it right here remember the winter forecast coming up on sunday and also the uh, the brief global weather report that will be released tomorrow as well Enjoy the rest of your Friday. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.